Hey everybody, I have a hopefully quick demonstration here for you. I was just asked to do a restoration for an old recording here. Rosalie Sorrell's The White Clouds and The Golden Bees. These are original mixes done at Custom Recording and Sound in late 1970 with Don Cedarstrom as the engineer. Now I know that studio fairly well and it's if it wasn't the first recording studio in Boise, Idaho, it was one of the first and certainly one of the best until probably the early to mid 1980s. I can say with fair confidence that this was mixed on Ampex 351. Before I get on that, I want to make sure that the deck itself is in top shape. First thing I'm going to do is make sure it's clean. I'm using 99.8% isopropyl alcohol. Just put a tiny bit in the cap here. An ordinary Q-tip damp. If you're working on a deck with rotary heads like DATS, ADATS, videotape recorders, you don't want to use cotton swabs. You want to use foam swabs because the cotton can clog the heads. On a regular linear deck, the cotton's fine. So I'm just cleaning everything that touches the tape. I'm not pressing hard. I'm just lightly going over it. If I see that it gets dirty, then I just switch to the other end or to a new swab. And I just keep going here. All right, well, the swabs are coming off pretty clean. I only used two on this one, so that's good. Next, I need to put on my MRL tape to make sure that calibration is perfect. It doesn't matter if I used this machine yesterday or six months ago. I always want to run this tape first just to make sure that it's in good condition. Now this tape says that it has two songs on it, one recorded at 15 inches per second and the other at 7.5, which is a little odd. It's, it's not unusual to have 7.5 inches per second mixes, especially if it was just a demo or something like that, but 15 is by far the most common, at least for professional recordings. I'm not going to get into the alignment process here, but... Rest assured, I do it. All right, we're all good. By the way, before I ran my alignment tape, I made sure that it had time to dry. The deck, not the tape. And for every 10 hours of tape to head contact, I have to degauss it. I'm okay for now. Now we can check out our tape. So it says this was stored heads out, which is something you should never do. Be kind, do not rewind. The reason for that is when you rewind the tape, it doesn't pack as evenly, and plus uh, any print through will occur as a pre-echo, so as the uh, tape passes over the heads, you'll hear a little bit of the first note or whatever before the actual first note. And if you just let the tape play to the end, then any print through, not, not only is the tape pack much more even, so it's less likely to get damaged or warped, but any print through will occur as just a very faint echo, which sounds more natural than a pre-echo. So I need to rectify that. The sole reason I keep these cheap plastic tape, tape reels here is for doing quick winding projects like this. So I'm just going to wind the tape from this side to that side, back over to this guy, and then I'll load up the original supplied reel on this side to act as the take-up reel. And that way, when it plays to the end at the end of the transfer, it's stored tails out, as it should be. I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually a bunch of tape spooled on here, then a little bit of leader, then more tape, then leader, then more tape, then leader, then more tape. What some studios did was they used old junker tape as leader and just a little bit of leader in between to show that, hey, here's where the actual material starts. It's not the best practice. I prefer to just spool on however much leader I need and call it good, but... And while I'm here, uh, notice that I have the bias engaged here. You will not see these VU meters move. The reason for that, two things. I'm using the 
phone jacks on the front, which are driven by the same amplifier as the main outputs. I'm using the phone jacks on the front to send to my recorder because these bypass the transformer, the output transformer, which is not really necessary for modern equipment. And I switched this to bias so that the VU meters don't load the signal. These can create kind of odd non-linearities under certain conditions. So I get the purest sound by switching this into bias mode. <clears throat> While I'm here, I'm also making sure that the real size on the take up is set to small and the supply side is set to large to make sure that the tension is as even as possible. By the way, since I, I'm not actually fast forwarding to where the first song is, it packs more evenly if you just let it play. Uh, while I'm here, I just wanted to comment that since I've preemptively set up my deck for 15 and 7.5 and inches per second since there's both speeds utilized on this particular tape, What's going to happen is when I reach the leader that's in between the songs, I'm just going to flip the speed down to 7.5 inches per second so there's less stress on the tape than stopping and then restarting it. All right, my tape just ended. I'm going to secure this tag end here in place with some splicing tape to make sure it doesn't come unwound in the box. It may be kind of hard to see this, but I folded a little bit of a flag here at the end of my splicing tape, and it the flag is overlapping the tape itself so if somebody ever needs to use this in the future you can just grab the tag i wanted to show off something here real quick now before i put this on my tape deck i examined this for damage and it looked pretty good but you notice that some of this tape is translucent it's because that is cellulose triacetate tape which is a wood product whereas the rest of it the opaque stuff is polyester now it's possible that these were recorded at two different times or it's possible that they just happen to have two different tape stocks handy, which you shouldn't do, but considering these were recorded at 15 inches per second and 7.5 inches per second respectively, I'm thinking that these were recorded at two different times. Anyway, I just wanted to show that real quick. I've also remarked this tape so that it no longer says heads out, it says tail out, so that if somebody needs to do a transfer of this in the future, They'll know they can put this on the take up side, rewind it, and just play it. I never grow tired of restoring a piece of history for people. It doesn't really matter who it is. Overall, I probably spent about an hour 15 minutes bringing this six minutes worth of music back to life, and I'm probably the first set of ears that have heard this in almost 40 years. And there's something really satisfying about that, knowing that future generations are going to be able to hear this and enjoy it because I gave a little bit of my time to do it. I hope you got something out of this, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. It's such a little part of all we have, they say. We'll put it back the way it was when we have gone. we need and we'll replace each fallen tree each uptown weed